Red pill rage may actually well be a side effect of the initial process of shedding one's ego. Can a man get stuck in red pill rage? And if so, what can help a man move forward and beyond this state of mind? What is the shedding of the ego? To understand this, we first need to identify and understand what the ego is. Sentences such as, someone's ego is their sense of self-worth, or another, if someone has a large ego, they think they are very important and valuable, can cause confusion as to what the ego actually is. So what is the ego? Is ego even the right word to use? If ego simply means self-worth, then it mustn't be such a bad thing. If anything, we need to protect and value our own self-worth for our benefit. Being a man in the modern world, a world that attempts to crush a man as soon as any signs of weakness show, proves that it must be vital that we identify our weaknesses and mould ourselves and our character in a certain way that does not allow intruders to undermine our well-being. What about if we had an inner voice, a self within thyself, or what is just commonly known as an ego that was also working to our detriment? We all do have an inner voice. Would it not be a good idea to tame this inner voice, this ego? Whether we call this the shedding of the ego or taming of the ego or inner voice shouldn't matter. What should matter is that this ego is no longer working to our detriment. In this presentation, I will also touch on the importance of being aware that one is going through red pill rage in order that he takes the next step forward towards taming or shedding his own ego. Just the simple fact that a man realizes that he's going through the red pill rage process will benefit him greatly. This is almost essential in order for him to progress and move forward. Do we want to be men going our own way or do we want to be men going our ego's way? Digging a little deeper, I found that the Merriam-Webster dictionary has a definition for the word ego that I recognize. It states two things that are of interest. Number one, the self, especially as contrasted with another self or the world. Number two, the one of the three divisions of the psyche in psychoanalytical theory that serves as the organized conscious mediator between the person and reality, especially by functioning both in the perception of and adaptation to reality. Digging deeper still, I found that in Arabian literature, the ego is called nafs or al-nafs, meaning the ego. Much of the popular literature on nafs, however, is focused on the Sufi conceptions of the term. According to the Sufi philosophies, the nafs in its unrefined state is the ego, which they consider to be the lowest dimension of a person's inward existence, his animal and satanic nature. An interesting part of this philosophy regarding the Sufi view of the ego was the concept that the ego goes through three stages. In order, the stages are development, refinement and mastery. I am sure there are other views as to what the ego is, but so far, just by looking at three different samples of information, I have some conflicting descriptions of what the ego is. So what is the ego to me? My inner voice? Another self of myself? My animal and satanic nature? I think to me what the ego is is very simple. It's the coping mechanism voice in our head that influences us in making decisions on how we react, whether inwardly or outwardly, whether it be by thought or whether it be physically, a voice that negotiates within the actual self. For example, I've walked up to the service station on the corner to get myself a coffee. I see three people waiting on the side and a female that's around 30 years old acting cute and pretty paying for her fuel and taking her time grabbing bars of chocolate and chit-chatting away with the person on the other side of the counter. In my head, my ego is saying, come on man, I just want to get my coffee and get out of here. Should I put these people in their place? Should I pull them up? So she pays, leaves, and then I get asked for what I would like and I make my order. I wait five minutes on the other side next to the three people. 
My impatient ego feels like shit and gets angry, but then my ego, which is on its way to refinement, kicks in. More like a tamed ego, or an ego that's in the process of being tamed, being pulled back by its master. Relax, where do you think you're going? I state to my ego self, whilst visualizing what could have ensued, me standing there looking angry and ultimately gaining nothing. I picture an angry version of myself, the person that had to go through the red pill rage deconstruct process in order for me to get to where I am today, in order for me to be able to breathe and survive in this hostile anti-male world. Sometimes I imagine that I'm in a cart with a wild horse in front of me. That wild horse is my ego struggling to guide the cart in a direction that I would like to pursue because this horse is not tamed. When I used to act out on my anger in my younger years, it would please many people, including females. Yeah, sure, I would always vouch for the underdog, but ultimately, I was waiting for someone to pick a fight with someone weaker in order that I defend the weaker person, so that I can justify pouncing on the so-called stronger and do justice. This is why I don't believe that alpha males actually exist. It's just a huge ego that I see, but that is another subject. Get a so-called alpha male, throw him into a marriage, give him a child, put him through the family courts and see what that does to him. In order for him to survive, he will have to tame his ego. This change is a part of the survival mechanism embedded within us. Even the ordinary man who many don't call alpha will go through the same repercussions. Marriage, children, divorce, family court, and he will come out a changed man most of the time. Most of the time traumatized and damaged Sometimes, these men don't even make it. Just like many fathers out there, my ego kept hoping that I would get my children to live with me a lot faster than what I had imagined. So during the first year that I didn't see my children in 2013, I bought them special beds. They were beds designed to look like cars. I was sure they'd be happy when they realized all that I had done for them. My son was three years old and my daughter four. Time goes by really quick. But there are other factors that come into play which are driven by the ego, which cause men a lot of problems. One of the biggest factors is false hope. The unrefined ego is constantly telling us that we need to prove that we did nothing wrong to our family and friends. Even though you know that you did nothing wrong, your ego gives you such a drive that forces yourself to be what you perceive as successful in the eyes of other people. Your ego doesn't want to be looked at as a failure and cares not for the actual you the separate you, the actual you that is being abused by this ego, an ego that the whole system of current civilization depends on. It shouldn't take much for awoken men to realize that almost the entirety of blue-pilled men have huge egos and still tell other men to man up. Give this a little thought and you may interpret this as man up to my level or my ego is greater than yours. This ego of ours is driven by many factors, religion, media, culture, education, and so forth. I think that the negative unrefined male ego is driven by the expectations of a man via these factors. One must look deeply into the eye of these expectations and question them in order for him to move forward and progress in his life. The unrefined ego is controlled by these factors to such a degree that it causes men to not know how to handle such a vast change, such a dramatic and chaotic trauma which leaves one's mind bruised, not knowing which direction to go. Anger is usually a reaction to this trauma. The confusion, the betrayal, what did I do wrong to deserve this? The unrefined ego now quickly develops an anger that we call red pill rage. I think that a lot of the red pill rage comes not only from cognitive dissonance leading up to the selection of a new route or lifestyle, not only from the betrayal of one's trust, but also the fact that we saw things in such a way that's so upside down that we even feel like we let our own selves down by falling for the deceptions of the plantation. The thoughts within our actual selves, the I factor, the entity that contains the ego is now forcefully caused to deeply criticize our past and previous views, not only for women and men, but society as a whole. 
The thoughts are so powerful that it causes an explosion within the mind, etching out new patterns of behavior, new views, new ways of dealing with people. The inner mind explosion is so vast and powerful that it impacts on the unrefined ego. The ego is now forced to make changes. In the past, our ego served us to protect our self-interests. But what were our self-interests? What were our goals? Who were the ones that we wanted to protect and why? Our ego was there all along the way from the moment that we were born, influencing us to make decisions that were based on things that were projected to us all our lives. So maybe to call it unrefined doesn't make sense. Maybe it was refined in such a way that the ego kept seeking approval from what the actual self wanted to pursue. Maybe the ego kept acting as a shield to protect us from what we thought was bad whilst living in the blue-pilled realm, not realizing that was detrimental to us. Maybe the ego is just a friend, blindly pursuing what the actual self is pursuing, only to need thorough approval from the actual self. Or maybe the actual self needed approval from the ego. Whether we want to label this transitioning state of the ego as shedding or taming, as men, we need to come to terms with the realization that it is something that must happen if we want to move forward from the fantasy world of the blue pill. I think that being aware of one's own state of consciousness and psyche can indeed help and assist a man in his progress in moving forward. When one continuously lives in the red pill rage state of mind, he is continuously walking around with the ball and chain around his ankle. In this state of mind, the raw and unrefined ego has a lot to prove and is fighting against what I previously mentioned, and that is cognitive dissonance. Many men that allow the unrefined ego to get the better of them think that they can pay back their ex-partner by sleeping around with other females as a form of retribution. We all know where that can land us if a female wants to make a false allegation of sexual abuse. But the ego wants to do this because it wants to feel special, as though you're big and strong. If men are aware of the fact that they are in the red pill rage state, or phase as I prefer to call it, then I personally believe that men can cause their own ego to develop and move into the refinement stage. There are benefits of refining or shedding of the ego. For example, not being concerned with how society views oneself as long as they themselves are happy and content to just accept things as they are without the approval of society nor the approval of your ego to not worry too much about how long a coffee is taking to be made and assuming the people serving you aren't taking you seriously to not worry about whether family and friends look at you as a loser or a success as long as you're doing yourself good the difference here is either being aware of being in a red pill rage phase or just being in a red pill rage state. To be able to identify that you're in the red pill rage state causes it to become a red pill rage phase and you will be able to progress from there. A phase is a transitioning era rather than suspended animation. What we need to tell our own selves is that this is our own individual situation. This is about me. This is about my own survival. The best way to do this is to tame our ego, to refine our ego. We may not be able to change what's around us and in the world, but we can surely change what is within us so that the quality of our own lives gets better. Mastery of the ego? Well, that's on another level.